Uh, welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioner's meeting of September 25, 2024. This meeting is being held in person in the main meeting room of the uh, Town Hall at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. Call the meeting to order at 4.35 and um, public comments suspended for purposes of discussion and we'll resume at the next regular meeting. Um, and discussion sewer rate hearing. So. Who's going to discuss that? Do you want me to give a heads up or do you? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's that time of year again. We need to set our FY25 sewer rates. Um, so Sarah got in touch about this last week. Uh, there is a requirement to post the meeting to actually, the, the hearing rather, for the sewer rates a month in advance. Uh, so our target date is October 30th for that hearing. Um, I know DPC and Brenda are already in touch and putting together the necessary financial statements, et cetera, so that can be included in the posting. And there will be a newspaper posting as well, since that's required by statute. And Did, David oh. also, uh, uh, DPC engineering also, who usually helps us with our hearing, um, our sewer rate study each year had offered to come and meet with um, the sewer commissioners before the hearing too, if we wanted to talk about any items you know we have certain projects we need to deal with you know we have the outflow pipe um, to the river we're waiting on SRF um, funding and then um, we have various other projects we need to think about starting to tackle such as old Deerfield and pipes all over town that need to be replaced so maybe we could talk about a plan maybe it doesn't fall into this this sewer rate but he was going to put together a few different options for us you know we do nothing just you know just growth each year um, interest uh, or if we tackled a couple of projects right and then we could discuss I know we we put money aside each year into the um, highway department budget for I and I infiltration um, info and infiltration so and then there's also money in engineering that we could couple together with us, you know, with some funding through a sewer rate increase to do to do some of these projects. But um, it, it would need more flushing out from us. I think we should do that before our hearing. Mm -hmm. So once they so, have things together, we could come back and meet. Yeah, I just want to check the date again. Did you say October 30? Yes. Uh, yep. And that's when we have to schedule a hearing? Vote it. We have to vote it on October. That would 30. be the hearing date. Yeah, I think. Have you posted it yet, or do you need a vote from we, us? To we we were gonna we were gonna get. Uh, well, actually, what we were waiting on was uh, the financial information from Brenda, which she provided today. Yep. Um, so now, yeah, if, if you want to vote it, Let's you could. Set it. We'll yeah. Go ahead. Let's get and it what set. do we need um, in terms of lead time for the hearing? Is it thirty days? Thirty days. So. Yep. So okay. Now. So it has to be. It could be like the twenty fifth, but it couldn't be before then. Well, I think you were planning the 30th, right? Yeah, we were, we were proposing the, the 30th that, because there's a select board yeah, meeting on yeah. that date. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to be away, so. Oh, you are? Yeah, I'm going to be oh. out of the country until November 3rd. So, so when are you leaving? I'm leaving on the um, <clears throat> 18th. Oh. Yeah, and I won't be back until the 3rd. So. so that's cutting it close, too, because we needed to get these this raid out, bills out and in by a specific time too so so when will you be back November November what? I will be back in town November 3rd oh okay and then you know so I could do it the first week in November or you guys yeah. can do it yeah um, you know well can you get on well you can I could probably zoom in from France yeah well let's yeah. why don't we do that why don't we set the hearing in the middle of the day here so I yeah, can do we, it at six o'clock sure <laughs> Set it, and then we could hold our me meetings before you leave with DPC. Yeah, so you're yeah. fully aware of what yeah. we're doing. Okay, why don't we do that? And yeah, I mean, it's a six hour difference. So I mean, if yeah. it's reasonable, if it's three o'clock in the afternoon, I don't know when the best time for a public hearing is. Yeah, we'll figure um, it out for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. You're going to be I later was, than us, or uh, so yeah. Yeah, so I'll be time. if if it's noon here, it's six o'clock and in the afternoon okay. in the evening in Paris oh okay right so if we had the hearing at like 3 it would be 9 p.m. for right. you and yeah, yeah. right okay. So okay I could either do the meeting before dinner or after yeah dinner. all right so well, it's a late dinner over there too right yeah, so. well, right. yeah. yeah they usually eat around 10 <laughs> they they <laughs> Ameri well, be in Paris, Americans right? eat early you know that's yes they they have the seven o'clock seating for the Americans right and 
then the French people come out at nine. Yep. So. Yep. So that's all right. All right. So, well, uh, oh. do you need a motion from us to set that hearing, or just a general discussion? Great. Thirtieth is good. Okay. <sighs> We'll try to have a light select board agenda that night. Yeah, yeah, we because that's we a big can, yeah. deal. That the, the hearing sure. is the big deal. For sure. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. So I think we got clarification from Denise about who the planning board had appointed. Okay. For and it was Ann Buchanan Weiss. Um. And as I, I was saying to Blake, I had instead of Rachel. Instead of Rachel, yeah, I think. Okay. And I had originally, when we got this, I'd volunteered to do it, but you know. Do you want to uh, appoint Rachel instead? Or is it something she wanted to do? She, no, I don't think she wanted to do it. I think oh. that's why they picked somebody else. <laughs> it wasn't at the meeting? Yeah. Uh, you know, just um, she's busy. Yeah. So Denise didn't explain it, but that's who they chose. Well, whatever you guys want to do. That was Ann Buchanan Weiss. Yeah. Is she on the uh, She's the, on the planning board. She's on the planning board as well. Okay. Yeah, she was I think she was elected this last term. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I think that's what it is, but uh, she was appointed. That's what she said to Christopher. Okay. Yeah. And they have a meeting on the on the 26th it looks like at 6. Right. That's what tomorrow, right? No, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Yep. So, well, Blake and I can both go, and then if I don't want to do it, <laughs> he says he'll do it. That's fine, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I was looking, I thought it would be interesting, but. Well, that's the same with me. I, I just don't know how the fur cog works, so I figured if I yeah. get on one of those positions, yeah. it would yeah, be better. I, I have idea. no clue be either, and so, okay. Well, I can just go and sit. That I don't have a problem. I don't have to be on a committee. No, exactly. So. so. And then I think, uh, <clears throat> All right, well, why don't we appoint me tonight, and then if we re decide to appoint Blake, and, and we can appoint Ann, and then, you know, if that changes, we'll just make an adjustment. Mm -hmm. So you need a motion? I think so. A motion so. to appoint um, Tim Hilchey to the planning board representative to the, for the FERCOG from the select board? Second. If I have that right. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Then I make a motion to appoint Ann Buchanan Weiss as the planning board representative to the FERCARD planning board. Second. Oh, uh, yep. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. And, All right. Uh, let's see. The, the next thing is the um, search, it's the initial screening committee so ad hoc screening committee for the uh, town administrator position yeah and you had sort of fleshed out what i was thinking but uh at the last meeting we just didn't vote it so um so we had go ahead uh so do do we want to kind of pick members now of who we yeah, want that's to be what on i'd that? like to do in case we have enough people by october for deadline to start actually screening i don't think we want to screen anybody until we have all the ones we're going to start correct yeah so. i would my thoughts are denise mason um chair of the planning board um and then um brenda if she brenda hill if she has um capacity and interest mm -hmm. um she's always been very valuable um input uh and since this is an administrative position i definitely that I, I just said no christopher no chris no uh greg right uh, and was thinking since john didn't serve on the most recent one we could bring the yeah. short back on yeah he usually level-headed about that stuff <clears throat> um and you know then i again i'd like to do it myself for the select board but that's okay again so we need, uh, let's see, let me think. And then sometimes we've also grabbed somebody from the public before, too. But um, Well, I, I, the question I have is what about the personnel board? Should they have somebody on board, though? That's a good thought. Well, yeah, I was wondering about whether um, 
we should reach out to them. There's, um, it's either that or if we take the three finalists and send them all three of their names Satu to the personnel before. board, then they come to us. Is Satu on the personnel board? I don't think so. Raloon, Raloon um, yeah. is. And, I know it. And also Eric Farrell, I think. Yeah. And then there are two appointees from Dan Graves, I think. Yeah. I, do you have the full list there? Yeah, so it's uh, Raloon is the chair. Uh, Joanne Carney, Eric Farrell, Cassie Jerome is our new employee appointee, um, David Sharp, uh, and then town administrator ex officio. Mm -hmm. David would be good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Raloon would too. be good. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that it would, well, I guess it doesn't matter. What are your thoughts? Well, I know I'm that Joanne Carney has been involved with the businesses with the VA and stuff like that. She's got a really good background in that aspect of it, so she would probably be a, a good candidate to mm -hmm. be able to screen um, somebody for that position because I think she's actually been in that position before. She has she served she, before right. on, on a search committee. Mm -hmm. I don't think we ended up picking them, and it really upset her at one time. <laughs> this was a little before my time, or just just when I was getting hired. But um, but that's sometimes the case, you know. Yep. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm, I mean, I don't know if she's willing to serve. Well, like I can say, and time. so let's pick two. So yeah. we'll try her, and then we'll try somebody else. Yeah. Because she does. She's got a full plate, and I, I right. but I don't know if she would do it or not. Yeah. So okay. I, I, so yeah, I'd, I'd be happy with. I'd be happy with anybody from the personnel committee um i mean Raloon being the chair maybe we ask her to pick someone yeah that's, um, even, that's, a, good that's even a good idea if so. she wants to do it or does it yeah i mean and, and i'd be perfect i've never worked with joanne before i'd be happy to yeah um, yep. get to know her um, um, and then okay And that's, I mean, four or five people on the that's initial enough. screening. Yeah, that's really and all we need. The plan is to evaluate two to three. Yeah, I mean, take all of the uh, take all of the ten or twelve or how many. Yes. Weed out the ones that are obviously not qualified. Do an initial screening that's not public. Correct. If there are six candidates that we interview, then pick the three strongest. Yeah. I've or if there happens to be. You know, I, I think three is enough. Three is enough. Yeah, because I mean, those need to be public and then need to be right. On right, camera. and those people are all. I mean, if we if we make it four, then every one of those people who might be a TA somewhere else yeah. is, is in the public and right. And they, a lot of times they don't. They'd rather not. Sometimes they step back once it becomes public if they're not really right. If they don't, yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah. I think put, putting forward three, three, three yeah. two to three, two to three. Yeah, I I think that. It's a good number, and you know, if neither of those work out, then we we felt like there was a third candidate or a fourth candidate that might have been viable. We can either re re uh, repost the job, or yep. or we can. Can you put somebody on, or put one or two people on standby? Is there well, yeah, is there a mechanism for that? I think that uh, yeah, if the first doesn't accept, we could go to yep. the next. Okay. In negotiation. Because that's happened yep. before. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. Is there another preliminary thing? So we want to make sure we have two candidates put forward. Yes. Otherwise, you have to redo it. Yes. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to feel comfortable that of the of the people you put forward, they're actually viable. Right. Yeah. Um, and if they're not, then we just continue to either repost or. And the job would stay open until it's filled. Right. I mean, that's did we post it that way? I don't know if we, I think did. we did. Yeah, it has yeah. a it has an application deadline, but then open until filled. Yeah. Did you guys want to uh, appoint any of the the proposed people that you brought up tonight, and then wait on you know, reaching out to the personnel? Yeah. Um, I think John would definitely do it. I wanted to ask Brenda, but I don't think she's in yet. Um, yeah, she's coming for the finance committee. I believe so, and that's at six. Um, 
You can I, wait. I mean, if we yeah. do it at the next meeting. Or you could appoint pending yeah. acceptance. Pending acceptance. Yeah. yeah, why don't we yeah, do, why that? do that? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I'm. Denise Mason, Brenda Hill, John Paturic, and Joanne Carney, the question. Or I think it was Ray Loon. Ray Loon. Or her designate. Yeah. And then. Belayak, I think it's named Belayak. Bil yeah. uh, Bielik, yeah. I mean, she's got four names. So there's a Thurston <laughs> in there. Yeah. 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 Oh, you got spelling? Good. Okay, good. And then, um, who was the last one? Ray Loon. No, no, I got that one. Uh, John Paturic, Brenda Hill. Oh, you, then that was it. That Denise was the one Mason. then. Yeah, I mean, unless you want to add one more, um, but I think that's I'd, probably I, enough. Yeah, I'd like to have a select board member on it. Yeah, okay. you know, so I think it's the most important job we're gonna fill, mm -hmm. and we have to think that the four people we identify as possible candidates we're gonna be able to work with. But I'm yep. certainly willing to hear other people's opinions. Well, my feeling is, is that if we, if we trust the people that we've got on this committee to do this, then we get, we're not tainted by anything from right. that committee. Let's just do four. Yeah. All right. So I'll make a motion to appoint the names that Trevor just mentioned, uh, subject to Approval by personnel and the uh, nominees. Okay. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Uh, hang on one sec, I'm just thinking about that. Oh, let's have some discussion. Yeah, we have a second for discussion. So we got one, two, three, four. Because you had jo Joanne Carney too, yeah, right? Is that, is that well, it was Ray Loon or, or her designate, and, 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 yeah. and, and she's on so there. Sure I get the motion, right? um, and I feel with Brenda and John and Denise on there, I think that's strong enough to um, well, you've administratively got... run that. I was concerned should we add another member, but I think I'm okay with that. And then we'll get a fresh. List of I think that people. I think the three of them have a very strong grasp on what what the town would be looking for mm -hmm. and uh, be able to give us some really good feedback as to the candidates that they choose so I mean with Denise with B Denise has been in business from what I understand as well yeah, yeah. and Brenda with her background and uh, John at the same thing very strong uh, backgrounds as well being has, able to to hire, had, has had to hire a lot of important uh, yep. employees over the years. Yeah. Okay. So. I'm good. Then. I all right. And I'm good. Okay. I was going to say I. I. Oh, I. I didn't even get to that point. I'm still sitting there looking at this. Uh, yes. All right. All right. Gilmore, I. Tim Hill, GI. All right. All right. So um, we'll. Uh, one of you can reach out to Raloon and just ask who she wants to either, if she wants to serve or if she wants to nominate somebody from the personnel board. And then uh, how long are they going to wait? How are our applications still coming in or? The deadline was October 4. Oh, yes. it was. Oh, okay, great, great. Thank you. Yeah. I, just, I couldn't so remember when we would do Do we that. know how many we have at this point for applications? Is there anything? Off the top of my head about somewhere around eight or nine. Okay, good. All right, that's enough to get started then on the, we'll wait till the fourth and then go from there. I was just, I was just making sure that we weren't getting, there was nobody applying. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, no. Somebody it's, wants to work with us. I, I think there was like a, the thought that the first few people that applied were possibly, you know, not real candidates. Okay. You know, but uh, anyway. Yeah. Um, okay. Good. Well, I don't think there's, is there anything else, Christopher? I'm. We had a we had a, a heat meeting that Christopher and uh, the borough Happold uh, representative were at today, and they talked about you know their findings uh, okay. so far. Yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, I don't know how did you feel about the rest of the meeting. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, it's there's like 20 communities who are talking about their different feasibility studies. So there's a lot of information in those meetings. It's uh, yeah, it's exciting stuff. And they're gonna they're gonna be doing a lot more outreach this fall. So we'll see Bureau Appled around talking to Berkshire Brewing, Treehouse, Pelican, all the kind of major opportunities in terms of uh, you know, yeah, exactly. Yep. The um, I guess just while we got you here, I uh, had a, another South County Senior Center. Board of Oversight meeting on Saturday morning. Um, and then earlier in the week, we had a feasibility kind of get round table um, looking at the different properties that they're looking at, trying to narrow it down to two out of Sundle and Waitley and Deerfield um, to look at and the square footage kind of needed, the consultants kind of think we need based on that. It seems higher than what people are going to be comfortable with, but um, those are the facts of, that are out there. So we're just going to, you know, this is a feasibility study of what, what we should have, and we'll just hear what it is. We don't have to do it, but at least we'll have a good grounding of information on what, what it would take to fulfill the senior needs for a senior center in the future and looking to the future to grow whether we have the space for that or not or the appetite to spend the money on that or not is a different different subject but we'll at least have that uh we'll have that option to look at um that'll be completed by the end of the year but we're getting closer to kind of narrowing down those 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 sites to look at the other thing that the boo has been working on is um we've needed to update our mou between the three communities the uh, memorandum of understanding that's probably 12 or 15 years old at the moment or maybe 10 it's been a longer than i've been around here and and um it it's had holes in it it needs some updating um and especially this was kind of when we were in that building and everybody was doing us a favor because instead of mothballing it we were using the building but um things being all over the place and different now and uh it's time to update that, but there, but the group has been looking at doing a consortium agreement. So, uh, Shelburne, Buckland has, ha, and I think another community are are doing a, a consortium, and it allows them to um, entity to you know to purchase a building they haven't used it, but to take over the take over more responsibility of running it more. Of, of like a district but not a district and they have found that beneficial up in Buckland and Shelburne I'm not quite sure how that works here um, with different people paying different amounts you know I, I, we have to look at the funding of that and then whose responsibility and oversight would it I mean obviously up to each town to kind of Go and you know this is like oh if we if we bought Sunderland or would Sunderland buy it or would the consortium buy it or right. there's a lot of I, I really wanted what I wanted to do is talk to you guys about reaching out to Lisa and sending her that agreement and what are the pitfalls what are the things we're missing here I, I'm concerned a, a, you know a bit about authority and who would be taking on you know like. The consortium just can't go out because we're a consortium and we wrote this thing we couldn't just go out and buy a building because we have no bond rating we have no money behind us i mean it has to be the towns behind it so right. th that agreement would have to get a lot thicker and larger hey jeff hey lean um would have to get uh, a lot bigger than um it was just a lot more in depth and i it just felt like it was getting a little over my head and i needed to reach out to lisa to kind of say what does this mean? Um, well, I think that if, they, if it ends up that they they buy the building and the consortium, we're tied to them then. Oh yeah, point. for sure, and for they, sure. Yeah, we'd I'm all not have sure to if be. That's something that's. A, and we'd have to think of okay, so if we if we remodel this building, you know, um, is it would it be a safer uh, thing for or a more equitable if the consortium does that and and we have all three towns pay the same amount going in or is it divided by population or you know how do we how do we do any of these projects we're going to have to do something somewhere well isn't so. isn't just about everything we do when we're dealing with these towns is basically 
depends on population and, and that sort of thing? It has. Yeah. Right now it's 25, 25, and 50. Um, and that was really for just operations. And then Deerfield took over any, we were responsible for anything to do with the building, any capital, anything like that. That right. was on us because it was our building. Right. And they felt at the time that they were, that was beneficial to Deerfield because we would have had to spend $100,000 or something or more to mothball that building at the time. This was years ago. So they were kind of doing Deerfield a favor by doing that. Um, and, and it, I'm sure it was beneficial at the time somehow, but um, but now looking at you know where we go in the future, you're talking large money. I mean, to, if you're going to do anything from ten to twelve thousand, fifteen thousand square feet, you're talking you know that many millions. So you know, and that's just pie in the sky stuff at the moment. But you know, right. it, whatever it is, it's a large chunk of money, and what is the town? Um, what, what are the residents willing to do or what are the other towns willing to do? There's a lot to flush out, but I don't, so the consortium talk was getting to the point where I wanted to send it to Lisa and say, what are we missing here? The other, the other thing too was- Did um, they actually have a document from those towns? Yes, well, yes, we do. Yeah, we have documents and all the research that they went through. They, they worked on it for quite a while once, once they came up with this thing and um, they haven't exercised any of that authority. They just kind of run their, Thing right. together it was it was their their operation S agreement so it'd be good to you know share that yeah w through Chris and, mm -hmm. and send it to me and Blake I mean of a, course a consortium yep you know you're right the the big problem there is the borrowing authority you know yeah the consortium and, can't commit a town to do anything and I think they'd use language a lot of language as host community so I right. think that a lot like we're fiduciary right for scams and for here, maybe we would take on that res responsibility again, but we'd have to, there's a lot to figure right. out. Maybe there's other communities across the state that do this too, right. regionally, but um, the maybe, other- Maybe a better MOU would be the way to go rather than a consortium. Yeah, so. yeah, it could be. So we've been working on that for multiple meetings, kind of flushing out what we want it to change and, and mm -hmm. that, so I can share that document too. The other, um, one other item was that um, the South County Senior Center is in working in conjunction with uh, Pioneer Valley um, PVTA, the Transportation Authority, right. and they're doing some, um, some kind of uh, transportation routes, uh, like I think on a Tuesday, and so we're, um, our employees are driving one of their vans uh, they've got a grant, they're sharing the van and to, to do this. So there's a, there was a policy about alcohol and drug use policy. And um, I wanted, I was gonna send that on to you or maybe have Lisa or somebody look at it to make sure like everything was covered because they're Deerfield employees. So I wanted to make sure, you know, it's good for the senior center to have a policy, but I wanted to make sure it would fit under our umbrella. We weren't missing something where all of a sudden we're liable. Um, I just wanted to make sure that eyes were dotted. And do they need a fraud. CDL? Yes. Know? No, they don't need a CDL. So there was a couple of things we went over, but I just wanted to make sure that everybody was on board and we weren't signing up for something that was, um, you know, putting us at risk. I don't think there is. I think we're covered on all that, but it was just getting a little bit over, like now them having separate policies at the senior center, is it really, does it fall under Deerfield anyways and we don't need to do this thing? I'm happy having double signatures and all. I just I just wanted to make sure that we were covered and we weren't so left are you, liable. Are you talking about insurances as well? It's not. Uh, no, and I, f I found out that the insurance is covered by PV, PVTA. Okay. But that's the other thing I wondered too, Will, is that I said I wanted to see an agreement. There has to be a memorandum right. of understanding between PVTA and our employees if we're driving their vehicle. So... The, yeah, there's that's, uh, there's a that's lot a, to flush out there, right. and I just thought, whoa, we just better make sure we're covered. Right. I, it's a great idea. It's a great way to cover people, get them to doctors, yep. do some senior transportation. But I just wanted to kind of touch on those things from that meeting, and I'll send you over some stuff that if you want to pass on to Lisa or whatever. So that's it. Good. All right. Um, anything else? We make a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Thank you. Thank you.